Hi, in this video I will show you how I comp a vocal track from multiple takes. I will go more into details about the tools that Cubase provides for comping, and I will show you how I specifically comp a vocal track. So let's go! So comping a track from uh, multiple takes has been part of Cubase for, well, quite a while already. So it's not a new feature in Cubase 11, but I'm going to show you in Cubase 11 because that's the current version that I'm using. And I've actually shown this technique before in my video about editing guitar parts as part of my new song production series. But I figured let's make a separate video about this because then it'll be easier to find and I can go into a bit more depth than I did in that original video. Now the original video is still quite worthwhile to watch because I'm showing comping as part of a larger process to edit a guitar part. And I will link that video for you to check out at the end of this one. So let's now have a look at the project that I'm using for this demo. So as you can see, I've got a lead vocal track with 10 lanes and only four of them actually contain takes. So let's have a quick listen to one of the takes. Out of the dark, take me apart, I'm ready to dive. I'm just trying to find the life and I am holding on. So when we're now talking about comping a track, it means that we're going to assemble the best parts of these four takes that you're seeing here to get to a better vocal performance. So for example, we might take the beginning of lane three, then a little part of lane four, then a little part of lane seven, etc., etc. So what does Cubase provide for this? Well, first of all, in order to prepare for comping, I always do the following. For example, you're now seeing here 10 lanes, but only four of them contain a vocal take. But obviously it would be nice now to not have to deal with 10 lanes all the time. So you can clean this up by right mouse click on the main vocal track and saying clean up lanes. And Cubase has now removed all lanes which doesn't contain anything except for the last one, which is left for the next recording if you were planning to do this. So let's expand these a little bit to make them fill the screen. Now another thing is that you may have heard that there was reverb on the track when I just played it. Dark, take me apart. Now in order to more precisely hear the bare vocal, I want to turn off the reverb. I'm ready to dive. I'm just trying. And there's actually also a compressor on the vocal. But I'm leaving that enabled as it actually helps me to hear the details of the vocal because it brings out the details a bit more. And finally, what I always do to prepare for comping is I turn off the grid because I'm going to cut up these vocal takes in a minute and I don't want to be restricted by beat or bar barriers or anything like that. I want to be able to cut anywhere that I see fit. So I turn off the grid. Now for comping, I always use the comp tool, which is a little hand on top here in the toolbar. Or when you have set up Cubase like I have, you can also enable it by right clicking and then selecting the little hand here. Now I actually started with the lane view on, but that's under this button in Cubase. And you want this enabled because you want to be able to select between the different takes on the different lanes. Now the lane that you're hearing is always the one which is colored bright. And you can select the one that you're hearing by just clicking on the appropriate lane. What you're also seeing is that if I select the lead vocal 7, which is on lane 3 here. Now Cubase will now let you hear the take on lane 3 until lane 3 runs out of material, which is around here and then it switches to another lane. So you actually already have a bit of a comp here, starting with lane three and then moving over to the take on lane one. Now you can also listen to the material on the various lanes by either using the solo button. The life and I am holding on. Now a better way to actually listen to parts of the various takes is by pushing the control button while the comp tool is enabled, because then it turns into a little speaker icon and you can actually just listen to a certain part. Which gives a quick way to listen to the various takes. Now you can actually also move the currently selected take. So you have to pick it up on the main track and then you can move a take, but at the same time I've never used this because why would you move these takes out of sync? So I'm restoring it, Ctrl Z. You can resize the various takes altogether 
So you can just pick up one take and for example, move to over here if you want to skip the whole first phrase in the vocal. Now to the actual comping, I remember that lead vocal four was actually sung very well. So I remember that from the recording. So if that is my main vocal take that I want to base my whole comp on, I can select it and let me enlarge this a little bit. And I can then select other parts from the other takes where I don't like the take on lane two. For example, I can select over here that I like this section on lane three and that I, for example, like this section in the first lane. So right now I have come to vocal track where it starts with lane two, then it briefly switches to lane three, it switches to lane one, and then in the end it'll continue with the take on lane two. Now this is quite a nice and quick way to do the comping if you know exactly which parts on which lanes you like. But I tend to do it in a slightly different way myself. So let's undo these cuts. What I usually do is I start from the main take, which I like best, and then I listen to that take until there is a moment where yeah, there is some kind of mistake or where I know I need to switch to a different lane now. And then I cut at that point. And you can cut by pushing the Alt key. You see that the comp tool changes into a scissor tool. And if I now cut over here, you can see that basically the cut is made on all lanes. So what I do then is I listen to how the vocal continues from this point on lane one, how it continues from this point on lane three, and also on lane four, and I select the best one basically. And after I have that next phrase, I again cut, and I know that I want to return back to the take on lane two. And I'll listen again from that point on. I am holding on. Engrave your heart, rip me apart. Now imagine that I don't like that engrave your heart part. Again, I cut over here. And I look for a take that I like better for that phrase. For example, over here. And once I'm satisfied with that, I again cut where I needed to replace it. And return back to lead vocal four for the main part. So that's usually the technique I use for splitting up and comping a vocal by working from left to right and just finding the best parts until I've gone through the whole track basically. Now if you want to fine tune, you can also move these split points. For example over here, I can move them and you can see that the split point moves on all lanes. So I can decide that I still want this part in there as well for example. Now it's also possible to undo. I can basically reselect from this point until the end. And you can see that the cuts which I had over here are now gone again. And if I want to get rid of all cuts that I made, I can select the whole range and all cuts have gone again. But let's now assume that I've made a vocal take. So let me quickly do this in the way I usually don't do it, but it's easier for demonstration purposes. Let's just imagine that this is the combination of all the vocal takes that I like best. What I then do is I create a new track version and I call it Compt because then I can always go back to the original Uncompt version where I have all the takes and selections and in the comp version, I'm gonna get rid of the parts that I don't need anymore. Now I have to say that I use track versions quite a lot this way in Cubase. I always try to keep the unedited version as a track version. And I actually have a separate video about how I do that, which I'll link up here. But back to the next step. And I want to get rid of all the unnecessary takes that I don't need. In order to do that, I use the object selection tool again. I select all takes. And then audio, advanced, delete overlaps. So now Cubase has basically removed all the parts which I had not selected and put all the parts that I had selected on one lane. So I can now close the lane view. And you can see that I now have one track, which is a combination of all the various lanes and takes that I selected. Now the next thing I do is I do crossfades on all those cut points. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You can either 
do it quickly in one go by selecting all these takes and pushing X. If you then look at one of those cuts in detail, you see that there's a crossfade on every cut basically. Now you may notice that some of these crossfades are fine, especially when they happen during moments of silence. But in order to be sure that they're all clean, I usually don't do it like that. I usually do it manually for each transition. So if I control Z out of the crossfades, no crossfade anymore. And I basically check every transition to see if there's audio under it. Because right now, obviously this is in a silence, but the transition point could also have been over here, for example. And in order to cover those situations, I usually zoom in in very much detail. And then I left select and right select the part and I push X. And then I can more finely tune the crossfade to make sure that it actually happens in a slight moment of silence. Okay, so after I've made sure that all crossfades are in the proper place and I've also checked them by listening to them, I create another track version, which I'll call bounced. because I also want to get rid of those crossfades so that everything is in one continuous audio file again. And you can do that by selecting audio, bound selection, replace events, yes. And now you have a nice combination of all the takes in which there were a nice crossfades, but now it's one continuous audio file again that you can use for further processing and editing, like for example, time aligning or tuning. And that's basically my method for comping a vocal track or any track really, because you can use this for other recordings as well. Now, if you like this video or found it useful in any way, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out on YouTube to get this shown to more people. And if you want to get notified when I post another video, you can ring a little bell icon as well. Now, the next video on your top right here details my whole recording and editing process for a guitar recording, including comping and lots more. So enjoy that. Have a look and see you soon.